Whether they see me as a hero or a villain, one thing is clear, I've left an indelible mark on the world. And as I continue to fight for my freedom, I hope that Mark will only grow stronger. I may be behind bars, but my spirit remains unbroken. I am Larry Hoover, and my story is far from over. In the annals of history, my name stands as a testament to the complexities of power, influence, and redemption. From the streets of Chicago to the halls of justice, my journey has been one of highs and lows, victories and setbacks. But beyond the headlines and the courtroom dramas, there's a deeper truth to my story. It's a story of resilience in the face of adversity, of determination in the midst of despair. It's a story that speaks to the struggles of countless individuals who've been marginalized by society, who've been denied a chance at redemption. My legacy is not just about the crimes I've been accused of or the sentences I've served. It's about the lives I've touched, the communities I've empowered, the voices I've amplified. It's about the fight for justice, for equality, for a better tomorrow. And as I sit here, confined to a cell yet undeterred in my quest for freedom, I'm reminded of the words of Kanye West, a man who's taken up my cause as his own, Free Larry Hoover. Those three words encapsulate the hope, the resilience, the unwavering belief that change is possible, that redemption is attainable. So let the world remember me not as a kingpin or a criminal mastermind, but as a symbol of hope, of possibility, of the enduring human spirit. I am Larry Hoover, and my story is still be This resulted in the creation of the Black Gangster Disciple Nation. By the early 1970s, the BGDN dominated the Chicago gang scene. In 1970, Barksdale was shot in his kidney and later pronounced dead in a hospital at the age of 27 in 1974. Following his death, Hoover assumed full control of the Black Gangster Disciples. In 1974, after the leader of the Black Disciples, David Barksdale, died of kidney, failure stemming from injuries incurred in A. 1970 shooting, Hoover took over the reins of the Black Gangster Disciple Nation. He deemed himself the chairman of the crew. At the time, the Disciples had control of Chicago's South Side turf. Under Hoover's rule, the Black Gangster Disciple Nation took over a majority of the Chicago drug trade while incarcerated. In 1978, Hoover formed the Folk Nation, which added all gangs in his personal likeliness and interests to relate to the BGDN, such as the Lady Satan, Maniac, Latin Spanish Gangster Disciples, Ambrose the Two, Two Boys, Two Sixers, Simon City Royals, Northside Insane Popes, La Raza Nacion, Spanish Cobras, Imperial Gangsters, Harrison Gents, and the Latin Eagles. The Folk Nation maintained their ground from within prison property to drug-ruffled streets. While Hoover was incarcerated, he ran the gang's illicit drug trade both in prison and on the streets, starting from Chicago's west side and later extending throughout the United States. Similarly, certain parts of the affiliated Folk Nation Alliance began to expand to parts of the United States, including the Midwest, of which Chicago is in. As of 2022, the Gangster Disciples has confirmed expansions to Indianapolis, Kansas City, Minneapolis, Detroit, Milwaukee, Birmingham, Cincinnati, Memphis, and Hoover's birthplace of Jackson. The folk nation, including that of the Black Gangster Disciple Nation, also personified a rivalry with the People Nation, which included other gangs such as the Almighty Black P, Stone Nation, run by Jeff Ford, who today shares the same prison facility as Hoover and is also a Mississippi-born native. Almighty Vice Lord Nation, Latin Kings, Michi Cobras, Southside Almighty Insane Popes, the Southside faction were rivals with the... Simon City Royals, Satan Disciples, and Two Sixers, causing them to splinter themselves from. The North Side Faction, Almighty Saints, and the Four Corner Hustlers. The Gangster Disciples also engaged in a city rivalry with South Memphis Crew, the love-murdering gangsters, formerly LMG Mafia. In 1989, the Black Gangster Disciples began having leadership problems as they noticed Hoover's leadership of the Folk Nation Alliance deteriorated once he shifted his sole focus toward the now splintered gangster disciples. 
The decline of the BGDN leadership infuriated a majority of its members and resulted in the two gangs separating into the aforementioned gangster disciples and the reincarnated black disciples. One instance of their split split and later animosity was a drug dealing dispute in the Englewood neighborhood of Chicago's South Side, which escalated into a shooting that killed several people. By early 1993, Hoover claimed to have renounced his violent criminal past and became an urban political celebrity in Chicago. Hoover proclaimed that the GD initials had changed to Life hasn't been easy for me, not by a long shot. Growing up in the streets of Chicago, I learned early on that you had to be tough to make it. But toughness alone wasn't enough. You had to be smart, strategic, always one step ahead of the game. My relationship with Wendy Jenkins, that was something special. We fought for our right to be together, even when the system tried to tear us apart. It took years, but we finally got the recognition we deserved, legally married by the U.S. Department of Justice in 2020. And then there were the cold cases, the murders that haunted me even from behind bars. I couldn't let them go, couldn't rest until justice was served. It's a part of my legacy now, fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. But let's talk about the legal battles, the endless uphill climb to prove my innocence or at least lessen my sentence. In 1997, while already serving time for murder, the weight of the law came crashing down on me once again. After a lengthy undercover investigation, I was indicted for a laundry list of charges, conspiracy, extortion, money laundering, drug-related offenses, you name it. They said my gang had 30,000 soldiers spread across 35 states, raking in $100 million a year. The numbers were staggering, the allegations damning. And despite my best efforts to fight back, I was found guilty on all counts. Three additional life terms were added to my sentence, ensuring I'd spend the rest of my days behind bars. My influence stretches far beyond the confines of prison walls. I've become a symbol, a beacon of hope for those who've been wronged by the system. In 1997, while already serving time for murder, the weight of the law came crashing down on me once again. After a lengthy undercover investigation, I was indicted for a laundry list of charges, conspiracy, extortion, money laundering, drug-related offenses, you name it. They said my gang had 30,000 soldiers spread across 35 states, raking in $100 million a year. The numbers were staggering, the allegations damning. And despite my best efforts to fight back, I was found guilty on all counts. Three additional life terms were added to my sentence, ensuring I'd spend the rest of my days behind bars. My influence stretches far beyond the confines of prison walls. I've become a symbol, a beacon of hope for those who've been wronged by the system. And as long as there's breath in my lungs, I'll continue to fight for justice, for myself and for others like me. In the realm of popular culture, my name echoes through the lyrics of rap songs and the skits of albums. From the Ghetto Boys' insightful discussions about the prison system to Rick Ross's bold declarations of allegiance, my presence looms large in the world of hip-hop. On Rick Ross's track BMF, Blowing Money Fast, my name is spoken alongside that of Big Meech, another figure from the streets who rose to infamy. I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover, he raps, immortalizing us as icons of a certain lifestyle, a certain ethos. But my legacy extends beyond music. It's woven into the fabric of communities across America, into the hearts and minds of those who've been touched. In 1989, Hoover's attention of the black, gangster disciples began to die down as he focused solely on the gangster disciples in raging parts of the BGDN subsets and the folk nation. Members of the Black Disciples decided to splinter from the Black Gangster Disciples, resulting in the reinvention of the original gang name and the incorporation of the new Gangster Disciples. Other members who felt disrespected by Hoover's declining orders decided to get his attention, again by instigating gang-related shootings toward the new GDs. 
two noted shootings that related to the dispute between the two disciple gangs was a drug-related shooting that killed some members of the gangster disciples in the 1991 revenge murder of black disciple leader Mickey Bull Johnson. Hoover is currently serving six life sentences for the murder of William Young at the ADX Florence Prison Facility in Colorado. On the evening of February 26, 1973, William Pookie Young, a 19-year, old neighborhood drug dealer, was abducted and later shot to death in an alley near 68th Street and Union Avenue in Englewood, a neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. His killing was ordered by Hoover after his name was mentioned as one of three people accused of stealing drugs and money from the gang six days earlier. 26 on March 16, 1973, Hoover, along with Young's killer Black Disciple member Andrew Howard, were both arrested. In November 1973, Howard and Hoover were both charged with murder and sentenced to life imprisonment plus 200 years in prison. Hoover was sent to Stateville Correctional Center in Crest Hill, Illinois, to serve out his term. At first, he was previously sentenced to life imprisonment, plus 200 years for a 1973 murder. However, following a 17-year investigation, he was convicted of conspiracy, extortion, money laundering, and running a continuing criminal enterprise from state prison. Hoover received another life term in 1997. He has made multiple, multiple attempts to have his sentence shortened. 67, 1973. While in prison for murder, 